biggest core update from Google search and I'm also going to be showing some of my results that happen for my websites and just go over basically the three different things that I do when there is a core update so I can make sure that I'm not only improving any of my content that has fallen in the search results but also taking advantage of some of the growth that we've seen as well okay first things first I am on the Google search status dashboard specifically for the August 2023 core update so when you go to the status dashboard it'll show you exactly when it started and exactly when it ended so you'll see right here release the August 2023 core update the rollout may take up to two weeks to complete so if we come back over here just to the incidents page you're gonna see status dot search dot Google dot com slash summary if you come here you can see all of the different updates that Google has released so going back to the September 2022 core update, you can see more as well, but they'll go over all of the different core updates. And if you click on the link spam update, the helpful content update, the spam update, the product reviews update, they will give you more information about what each update is actually doing. The duration over here is showing how long it took to completely roll out each of the different core updates. So the most recent one was 16 days and three hours started on August 22nd. So when you click on release the August 2023 core update, there's not a whole lot of information outside of release the update rollout was complete. Now, when you click, if we come back over here, this is considered a core update. So a core update is essentially just Google trying to give better search results to anybody who is searching literally any keyword across the Google search engine. So when you see a core update, that basically means Google is trying to give people more helpful content. So the best thing that you can do is make sure that you are creating more helpful content. If you see a drop after a core update, that generally means that you either need to add more information to your content, you need to make sure that the topics that you're, you are covering, you're covering all sorts of different subtopics, linking those pages together, because what may end up happening is one of your pages that was ranking pretty well, when Google does a core update, they may say, okay, this website has one or two good pages of content on a specific topic, but that's really all they have. It hasn't been updated recently. So what we're going to do is we are going to view this as not as helpful as these other websites that have kept this content more updated. And they also have more pages of content all around this topic. So the best way I can explain this to you is I saw a drop, a few different drops from my website, surfsideppc.com. Actually, this website dropped and Beachfront Core and Farmhouse Gold saw pretty good increases, which kind of surprised me, actually, because I've been working pretty decent on this content. But I do have a lot of old pages and things that I need to update and some areas where I've only covered a topic once or twice. So I have the Search Engine Marketing Complete Guide for 2023. This was one of the pages that saw the biggest drops for me. Um, so if we come down here, basically all I did was I, I came into this page. I actually removed... It was about a 3,000 word article and now it's down to about a 2,300 word article. So I've removed some content from it and tried to structure the content a little better. Now a few different things, the video here, this video is several years old, so I need to update this video. Even if it's still relevant, it's several years, time to update the videos, time to update any images that you have. So a lot of the images I was using, even though they were very similar and completely relevant to the article, were from several years ago as well. So I've updated this article a few times over the last couple of years, just updating the written content on it, but I've never actually updated some of the visuals. So I went through, updated a ton of the visuals on this page. So all of these visuals that you're seeing are completely brand new. And what I tried to do is just give the information and structure it a little bit easier for people to completely understand. So making sure that I'm linking out to tutorials that will be helpful up at the very top here, you can see I have my search engine marketing video up at the top here. So again, trying to give as much information about doing a complete guide for search engine marketing and making it easy to follow and understand. Now, a couple different things that I plan on doing. First is you need to update any of your content that you saw that dropped. It also wouldn't hurt if you saw content increase to just go in there and update that content as well. When I say update content, it means anything that is out of date whatsoever. So if you have any information from 2022, 2021, Obviously, we're in 2023 right now, so you need to go back and update all of that information. What I've done is I've taken some of my more recent videos and made sure I linked those recent videos here. And then what I've also done is try to increase some of my internal links as well. So internal linking to this page and then internal links within this page to make sure that that make sure that things are kind of connected a little bit better on my website. So a few different things that I'm going to continue to try, but I updated all of these different images here kind of structure the content a little bit better and then at the very bottom i have my search engine marketing youtube playlist and if you see here i've basically created one total video about search engine marketing since i've started my channel 
So coming up with a series of search engine marketing videos is on my list of things to do and making sure that I take that series and turn them into helpful blog posts that are also interlinked and make sure that people understand search engine marketing tips, search what is search engine marketing, how does search engine marketing work, search engine marketing best practices. So just doing some keyword research for search engine marketing to make sure that I am covering this topic completely. The other thing I did recently is I added this big banner to my website and I actually updated my homepage. So I think I'm going to remove this banner for now and see if just creating a better overall user experience will also help with my helpful content. At the very top of this article, I also plan to add a table of contents and then I think I'm going to move this newsletter down on my blog post because I have this at the very top of every single blog post. So maybe putting this about halfway down the blog post. So probably will end up helping me with subscribers anyway. So that's a couple of the different ways that I try to react to this. Now, what I'll also do is come over to the Google Search Console. And again, what we're going to do is look at the dates of the core update. So if we come back over here, release the August 2023 core update. What I generally do is I'll take one day after the core update. So we'll do August 23rd and then one day before it actually completed. So we'll go to September 6th. So generally what I'll do is I'll take one day after the core update was actually released because if it's released on this day, I figure not that much is going to happen on the very, very first day it's it's released. So starting from August 23rd, and then we'll just go, we can go all the way up to whatever data that we have. So I'll go to, I think I have up to September 8th right now. So we'll go August 23rd to September 8th. And that should give us a pretty good idea if we compare that data to the previous period about what increased and what dropped. And here's another thing that I'll do. So coming back over here, going to our Google search console data. So I'm looking at beachfront decor right now. I've already pulled up some of the pages and I'll show them to you in a minute uh, that I saw increases on and that I saw drops on. So come over here. Let's go to filter first and foremost go to custom and we'll start from august 23rd and then going to the end date over here and we'll go okay so we have up to september 9th it looks like so we'll go all the way to september 9th it doesn't hurt to have some extra data so this is basically the data during that time period but this doesn't tell us anything so we're going to come right back over here when you click on compare it's automatically going to pull in that previous period so from august 5th to august 22nd same number of days as august 23rd to september 9th so it should give us a pretty good idea of what increased, what decreased, and some of the different things that we should look to not only improve, and some of the different statistics we should look at. So right now I'm in Google Search Console. We are looking at the same exact periods of data before and after the core update. So you'll see my impressions have increased pretty drastically. My clicks have gone up. Average click-through rate actually dropped slightly, and my average position actually dropped slightly. So not too worried about either of those. Uh, if we scroll down here, the very first thing I look at is my search queries and what has increased and decreased. So you can look at clicks differences. So some increases in clicks. So obviously look at, I try to look for specific categories of what increased. So you'll see beach theme bathroom, beach theme bathroom ideas, Tommy Bahama beach chair, Margaritaville Adirondack chair, land shark chairs. So a few different things that have increased um, nautical quilts. Now we keep scrolling down here. Okay, and I try to look for things that aren't overly seasonal either. So there's a few different things for beach chairs here, but coastal entertainment center, tropical bedding, wicker chairs, really not too much to get from some of these click increases and some of the differences that we're seeing. Now, kind of a sad thing, but the Margaritaville increases may unfortunately be due to the fact that Jimmy Buffett passed away recently, and there may be more people just in general searching for Margaritaville-related products. So... That might be what I attribute that to. Um, the other thing that we'll look at are click drops. So I actually don't see a, a ton of click drops here. Uh, so since I saw some increases, there's not a ton to look at. For this, it was pretty clear for Surfside PPC, a few of the different pages that dropped for me. If you're looking for a little more information about drops on Surfside PPC, I do go over it in more detail on my membership section. So my membership section gets more information about my Surfside PPC blog. So... If we're looking at some of these different clicks here, the main thing that I saw when I looked at some of the clicks and the impression differences is I saw some drops related. Now, if you see zeros here, that means that the, altogether, it's probably not pulling in that data properly. So you'll see I do have plenty of impressions still. Not really a huge drop here. So if you are seeing zeros, unfortunately, sometimes that's just a problem with Google Search Console is when you're looking at impression differences. So we'll get rid of our clicks real quick. We'll just look at impressions. If you're looking at impression differences and you're seeing a zero for a time period, it's probably just that it hasn't updated yet. So come down here and look for something more like this. So baby beach chair has dropped. We've seen increases and decreases with beach chairs, so it's probably just seasonality. 
It's the unfortunate thing right here is some things. So Coral Decor has dropped. I actually know why that's dropped, and it's because I haven't updated my Coral Decor page in at least over a year. Coming over to my pages, sometimes it's easier to see through the pages rather than the search terms and looking at impression differences positively. So cork bottles, beach themed bathrooms, copper farmhouse sink. So that's, oh, see, we got the zero. So look for the zeros because that means your data is just not correct if you're seeing these in impression increases and decreases, unless you had something that just completely wasn't indexed beforehand. So tropical bedding sets, Tommy Bahama bedding sets. So we're seeing some increases across the board for bedding. Wall, de wall decor, wall decals. Let's see what has dropped. Okay, so coastal wall art has dropped. Umbrella beach chairs. Okay, again, we got the zeros here. So this is this is the problem with looking at Google Search Console data sometime. Um, but if you're seeing the zeros, I wouldn't worry too much about that. So this was one of the pages that dropped. Tiki bar ideas and decor. So if we come over to the page, the, the first thing that I look at is, okay, what what about this page looks like something I should absolutely improve? What's probably happened is some of these links, some of these products probably are not active anymore. So they're going to pages that might be a 404 page. And obviously we don't want that coming down, looking at, we have some different designs here. These images are probably old from the last time I updated them. So this might be something where it's like, okay, let's try to find some new Tiki bar pictures. But overall, I mean, this page isn't terrible for somebody who's trying to build their own Tiki bar. We have some ideas here. We have some products for sale. Maybe trying to give better products overall might be helpful um, and making sure all these links are still live. Another page that dropped for me was 101 beach themed bedroom ideas. So to me, the biggest reason this probably dropped is because I actually wrote this blog post several years ago and it has just maintained its rankings and clicks. So I haven't done a ton to change it, uh, but maybe writing a sentence or two about each individual design, what I like about it, saying, you know, beautiful paint colors and the mirror, the bench in front, blah, 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 whatever. So doing some of those things will be helpful, especially because we have, I think I have 101 ideas here. So coming to the bottom, we have a few more images. So maybe adding some more, some more content at the bottom, some more images at the bottom that might be helpful, linking out and linking in from other pages. So again, when we're looking at what we should do during a core update, look at first and foremost, go to your Google Search Console data. Obviously these zeros are kind of frustrating, but Look for impression differences and make sure you are actually seeing data for both of these. Now, if you're seeing an impression difference like this and just click on the actual link itself and you'll see the information a little bit better. So this is actually showing we saw an increase in impressions, but a decrease in clicks. So average position improved, but our average click through rate dropped. We only had four clicks during this time period, so not overly popular, but you'll see the solid line is the new line. So seeing this means it's a good, we've seen basically a double in impressions. So what it comes down to is maybe looking at this page, the page title, just updating the page in general. I always think that this is a product category, adding a few new uh, products to the page, making sure that I have a good page description, some content at the very bottom of the page, all things that I try to do when I am trying to improve my overall results. So that's first and foremost, look for increases or decreases in impressions. I would obviously focus on the decreases first because that means Google saying, not that your content isn't helpful, but that there's other content that is more helpful than this after they redid their core update. So if we come over here real quick and we look at farmhouse goals. So if we pull up farmhouse goals, we'll have the same compare dates that pull up automatically. You'll see I saw a really good increase in farmhouse goals. So if we just look at the compare data will look at clicks and impressions. So you'll see the solid line you'll see is the increase. So we went from about 10,000 daily impressions to about 20,000 daily impressions, 75 clicks to about 150 plus clicks. So we saw almost a doubling for a lot of this information. And I should see this continue to increase if I keep working on some of these pages. But again, what I look for first is clicks differences positively and negatively. If I see things positive, so this is showing farmhouse bedding positive, farmhouse quilts, that shows to me, okay, some of the work that I've done on those pages has helped me actually increase the clicks to those pages. Now, what I also look for is if I'm seeing these increases, then it's like, okay, what other categories can I add to my website related to farmhouse bedding? These are very, very popular keywords. So if I can add more products to these pages, add more subcategories to these pages, if I can make sure every single page has a really good product category description on it, maybe some content at the bottom of the page, so for example, for farmhouse quilts, at the very bottom of the page, I'll just do some simple, what are farmhouse quilts? What are five popular farmhouse quilt styles? Why should someone get farmhouse quilts? Those simple things 
when Google sees my product category page and they see that content there versus that content not there, it's more helpful to see what are they, why you should get them, different styles, different sizes, anything that people are actively searching in Google, add a little bit of that information to product category pages, add a little bit of that information to some of your blog posts. So coming back into my tiki bar ideas for beachfront decor, I need to just kind of come through here, look through all these links, make sure that the links are still active. And then at the very bottom, update some of these images here that I have, the tiki bar designs, maybe put a total of 20 designs, find 10 new ones, keep 10 of the nice existing ones, and then add some internal links, external links, things like that. So basically just kind of getting back to our SEO best practices, not only trying to improve the existing content on the pages, but also trying to make sure that we are using internal linking and external linking and making sure that our product title or page titles and meta descriptions and all these basic things are just optimized as best as they possibly can be for the keywords that we're targeting. Now, the other thing you can do is if we click on individual pages here, so we saw some growth with this farmhouse quilts page. Looking at the search terms for specific pages can also be very helpful because if you're seeing, okay, we're seeing some good clicks differences from specific keywords and some click drops from specific keywords, it may mean, okay, country quilt sets, rustic country quilts, vintage farmhouse quilts. Maybe what we can do instead is try to create separate product categories for some of these pages and target these keywords a little bit better now. So if you're seeing certain things drop when you have seen an increase on a specific page then that may mean, okay, let's try to turn this into its own page on our website so that we're, and then link it to that main page on your website. And that's ultimately what you're trying to accomplish basically for your SEO strategy in general. So to recap, Google core updates, you can go to status.search.google.com slash incidents to see any of the core updates that will bring you to this page right here where you can see any of the issues that they're having, how long it took to fix. And then right here, you can see the actual core update how long it took, use that information to go to Google Search Console. And the, the three things that I would recommend doing, first and foremost is looking at specific search terms and looking at clicks differences and in increases and looking at clicks differences in decreases. If you're seeing a lot of decreases, focus there first. So that's first and foremost, focus on clicks differences for individual search terms because if you're seeing a huge drop for certain search terms, it may mean that, okay, I need to improve the way that I am actually targeting this keyword on my website. The other thing I would look at, same thing, are impression differences. Now keep in mind, if you are seeing zeros here, that just means that your data is not properly coming in. So you can always click on this and you can see, I've actually seen some really nice growth here for this fire clay farmhouse sinks. And coincidentally, I just completely redid my the blog post on my website that goes over all sorts of different types of fire clay farmhouse sinks. But I also think I've just seen a lift across the board on my website because I've been updating a lot of my old posts on my website, adding some new products and going into my product categories and trying to optimize them as well. So the changes that you are doing all the time when it comes to a core update will help you increase these rankings. Don't think you're stuck here, whether you're seeing increases or decreases. It basically means, okay, we have to reevaluate our SEO strategy, look for some of the decreases that we saw in terms of clicks and impressions for our search terms. Next thing I'll look at, number two is going to be my pages, clicks, differences, increases, and decreases. So same exact thing. If you're seeing any major decreases, so my homepage is actually seeing some decreases in clicks and impressions. So that might just mean that traffic is going elsewhere. Look at the individual page to figure out which search terms. So if we look at our search queries here, which search terms are actually causing this drop off. So the thing that it may be sometimes is you have a keyword like farmhouse decor that was getting impressions for this page and now it's getting impressions on another page. So it doesn't mean you necessarily saw a drop for a specific keyword. It's just that that keyword is now going to a separate page. So a lot of things to look at in Google search console, but trying to find those pages and search terms. That's the first two things I do pages and search terms that had increases and decreases. I look at impressions a lot. Uh, if I'm seeing impression differences, uh, so let's get rid of clicks here. I like to look at impressions a lot because if you're seeing some of these negative impressions, so farmhouse chandeliers, farmhouse lighting, those are the top two that saw impression drops. That means it's time to go to all of my farmhouse lighting product categories, all of my farmhouse lighting blog posts and update everything. Make sure I'm covering every single subtopic effectively. Make sure that I have updated products on all of these product category pages. And then again, going into those product category pages and when this is basically part three, so 
first two things, identify search terms, identify pages that have saw increases or drops. Next thing and last thing is basically going into these individual pages, this farmhouse lighting page, looking at all of my subcategories, making sure that I am targeting every single possible keyword related to farmhouse lighting, looking at all my farmhouse lighting related blog posts, making sure they are all updated, making sure I have some helpful content on my blog posts about different types of farmhouse lights, indoor, outdoor, lamps, chandeliers, pendant lights, all these different categories. So there's a lot of work to do when it comes to trying to recover these impressions and recover these clicks. But what you're going to find is if you're seeing these drop offs during a core update, it means at one point Google said, okay, this is, this is helpful content. We're ranking this content pretty high. You see your average position, for example, let's see our average position for these pages. So you'll see our average position, it's actually improved slightly for both of these, but what it may be is that certain search terms. So again, coming into our page, looking at specific search queries for this page and looking at the impression drop. So if you're seeing this for something like farmhouse chandelier, modern farmhouse chandelier, first things first, do I have a page on my website for modern farmhouse chandeliers? Then what you're doing, so farmhouse kitchen chandeliers, I don't think I have a page on my website for that. So maybe that's something I add a few different subcategories under chandeliers. It's such a popular keyword and it's such a profitable keyword that it makes sense to target this keyword a little bit better. So step three basically is this, and I'm just going to use my example for beachfront decor is first and foremost is looking at your existing content and seeing how well you think you're actually how well you're actually targeting that specific keyword for this content. Second thing second is just going into your blog post, checking for any technical issues. So any types of issues as far as page speed, any type of issues as far as broken links. And then the other thing I would look at when you're looking for broken links is what type of internal links do we have on this page and what type of internal or external links we have on this page that are actually going to be helpful for whoever is searching for our targeted keywords. Now, the other thing that you want to do is all of the written content on your page, all of the images on your page. So if we come all the way to the bottom here, making sure that you're using really updated images and keeping things as relevant as possible, because if I uploaded these images in 2020, it's currently 2023, what Google might say is, okay, this article really hasn't been overly updated in several years. Other people are targeting the same exact keywords. They're doing it more effectively. They're doing it more recently. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop this page a little bit until they can actually update it and make it a little bit more relevant. Last but not least, your written content here. This is where keyword research comes into play because if I'm trying to target the keywords related to Tiki Bar ideas, I need to understand every single long tail and relevant keyword that would be related to Tiki Bar ideas, the different things that people are looking for. You can see here, this is a big block of text. There's no images, there's no links, internal or external. So what I need to do is here for Tiki Bar Stools, link out to the page on my website with Tiki Bar Bar Stools. To your Tiki Bar Signs, link out to a page on my website with Tiki Bar Signs. I actually have a page on my website for standing coolers. So maybe putting the, my six favorite standing coolers and linking them here as well. Tiki Bar Accessories, Tiki Torches. So basically, I can get this page to rank higher by adding all these as product categories, potentially adding more blog posts related to what to look for when you're trying to find Tiki Bar Stools, what to look for when you're looking for Tiki Bar Signs, creating a standing coolers blog post, and linking out to all those blog posts from this page. Ultimately, what you're trying to do is you're trying to tell Google when somebody searches for a keyword like Tiki Bar Ideas that I have the best, most updated, most relevant, most helpful content on the internet. So if you're not ranking me first, and that means that you're ranking my competitor's page, which isn't as helpful as mine, above mine, and if you're not seeing that, then the customers who are visiting your website will show that by the way they interact with your website. So those are kind of the three different things that I do when there is a core update, some different ways to prepare for it and to react to a core update. So if you have any questions about any of this, please leave them in the comment section. Go to your Google Search Console and see how it has it impacted your website. You should see some level of increase or decrease. Um, if you're seeing things completely level, then that just means I would still go in and try to find any areas that you can improve on your website to kind of target keywords better, target complete categories of keywords better. So for farmhouse goals, I got to work on my lighting keywords for beachfront decor. I didn't see anything majorly increase or drop. I saw some increases, but um, basically just going in and seeing any drops that you can find, any keywords that we can Im improve. And then it just comes down to improving your overall content in any way you possibly can as far as creating more helpful content, as far as making sure if this is the only only content on my website about Tiki Bar Stools, 
why not actually make a complete uh, blog post about the best Tiki bar stools, link out to different products, go over some more information about what Tiki bar stools are, different styles, different colors, et cetera, et cetera. So same thing with my search engine marketing page is I have two total blog posts on Surfside PPC about search engine marketing, this one and one other basic one. I've updated both of them. So just going in and keeping things updated, updating your images, updating any visual content you have on that page, and then structuring your content and using the internal, the external linking, using all of that to make sure that you are creating a really high quality blog post. So the other thing I need to add to this blog post is a table of contents at the top. So another thing that will be helpful is if you have different sections of a blog post that people can easily find it. So if you have any questions about any of this, please leave them in the comment section. 